Many caves are known as places of ancient sites, yet what did people actually do at these caves? The dark and enclosed areas seem unlikely or impossible for supporting permanent residential habitation. Yet people did use these places for various purposes, generally of short duration and specific contexts. Additionally, caves often show differential use of the light zones toward the exterior versus the dark zones toward the interior. Based on these issues, this video considers what people did at ancient cave sites. Human biology does not allow large groups of people to live for long periods of time inside a dark and enclosed environment. Artificial lighting would be necessary, yet the sights and sounds always will be distorted and disorienting. Even for the individuals who are accustomed to these settings and surroundings, they still need to cope with the extra stress on their physical sensory perception. Meanwhile, a deep and enclosed zone of a cave lacks ventilation or air movement, and therefore air pollution quickly can become problematic with burning torches, campfires, discarded foods, and general waste disposal. Many caves contain sources of fresh water that could support groups of people, but people probably would want to protect the water sources against pollution or contamination. In any case, people would need to go outside a cave for obtaining essential food and nutrition and for maintaining basic physical and mental health. Despite the practical limitations about caves, people did access these areas and use them for different purposes. People could not have lived fully inside the dark and enclosed spaces throughout their entire lives and for the complete scope of their activities. Rather, people used caves for specific purposes of some, but not all, of the contexts of their lives. In other words, people would use caves for a portion of their larger scope of activities. In this sense, the academic literature often refers to caves as special use places or as specialized sites. In terms of the archaeology evidence at caves, the discarded foods, tools, possible rock art, and use of space all tend to be different from the usual patterns at regular residential sites outside caves. The precise functions and associations typically are unclear, although they can be acknowledged as different and uniquely distinguished from ordinary daily activities. Traditional and historical references often mention ritual or ceremonial aspects of caves, and these associations can be respected even without knowing or exposing every detail. For instance, rock art and burial features, certainly related with some kind of religious or similar beliefs and practices, although the specific beliefs and practices may be unknown today. In many caves, the ritual or ceremonial associations have changed through time accommodating new forms or interpretations of traditions in magic, religion, studying, and meditation. Caves, of course, are convenient for natural protection from stormy weather, warfare, or other possible hazards. People often have used caves as temporary shelters, overnight camps, and places of refuge. Most of these examples involved short-term episodes of use. The singular episodes, though, may have been repeated in variable frequency. If a cave happens to involve an exceptionally large and lighted opening, then the potential use can be much more diverse. In fact, this kind of large, open, and lighted environment could support regular habitation. Typically, people would have created individual activity areas for cooking sleeping, and other designated purposes. At most caves, people differentiate their use of the light, twilight, and dark zones. Additional differentiation depends on how people could navigate through the size, shape, and configuration of any particular cave formation. In my work in archaeology, I compare the findings at caves with the evidence of the same age from other sites outside caves. I consider how people used these two different venues simultaneously and how those relationships changed with each other through time. The details, of course, are different in every geographic region and cultural context, yet these comparisons always reveal more about how people used caves as parts of their lives in the larger world. What are your experiences with caves, and how would you approach studying these special places? Thank you for watching here. I will see you in the next video.